I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're talking about RC interpolation. RC interpolation is a feature in Betaflight that when you adjust it properly, minimizes the latency between when you move the stick and when the quadcopter actually moves. This will also give us the opportunity to talk about something called D-term kick, and we'll segue into two of the other topics that people ask about a lot, the D-term set point weight and the D-term set point transition. We're going to talk about all that stuff. Stay tuned. In order to understand why RC interpolation is necessary, let's take a look at a black box log. And what we're going to look at in the black box log is something called RC command. RC command is Betaflight's name for all of the commands that come out of the receiver. So you move the sticks or the switches on the transmitter and that goes over the air. It goes into this receiver antennas and the receiver outputs it like with S bus or I bus or whatever. That gets read into the flight controller and that's called RC command. If we take a look at this uh, black box log, I'm going to go to graph setup and I'm going to add the RC command to the graph. And I'm going to do something here it might not make sense at first. I'm going to turn off Expo by setting it to 100%. I don't want any shaping of the graph. I want to see it exactly as it should be. I'm going to leave the zoom at 100%. And what we'll see immediately is that there is a very strong stair stepping in the graph. Right here, here is the stick movements. Uh, we're looking at pitch is the blue line. That's the one that I was really wiggling and moving. And you can just a very clear stair stepping. Why is that? Obviously, I wasn't moving the stick eh, 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 in a stair step manner. So the reason for the stair stepping is that RC command comes in in frames. So the receiver is not outputting a continuous analog value. It's outputting digital frames. Those digital frames come, I think, every uh, 16 milliseconds, uh, 11 milliseconds. It depends on how many channels you're using on your on your Tyrannus, in this case, a Tyrannus. Um, if you've got it set to channels 1 to 8, then it sends eight, frame, uh, 8 channels in one frame. I believe it's an 11, it's 11, it's an 11 millisecond frame. And if you're doing 16 channels on your Tyrannus, then it sends channels one through eight in the first frame, channels uh, nine through 16 in the second frame, and then one through eight again, and it alternates so that the spacing is actually, I believe it's 22 milliseconds. So one quick tip for you right now is that it's a great idea, and I do this on all my quads, to set your, your Tyrannus to only use channels one through eight. You have fewer aux channels to play with. You still have four aux channels to play with since channels one through four are used for your main controls. You have four remaining aux, just simple math. So you don't have as many aux channels to play with, but it cuts the latency in half. Now that's Tyrannus. If you're doing uh, Spectrum, for example, Spectrum has, I think it's like nine millisecond timing on on like the three main control channels. I don't, Spectrum does a little more complicated to get better performance out of it. The bottom line is that for any of these digital protocols, there's gonna be a frame spacing and we're gonna see stair stepping in the inputs that is a timed in corresponding with those fra incoming frames. Every time a new frame comes in, we get a new channel value and RC command is immediately updated to the new value, which results in the stair stepping. Now here's what's wrong with the stair stepping. And here we get to the topic of something called D-term kick. Now I've got a video discussing D-term kick and what it is in quite a lot of depth. I'm gonna give you the short version and you can go watch that video and I'll put a link in the upper right if you wanna go watch that. Uh, D-term kick occurs because the D-term is calculated proportional to how quickly the thing that it's based on is changing. So if we go back, if we compare that to the p-term, the p-term is, is uh, proportional to the magnitude of the error. The more error there is, the, the more uh, the, that the quadcopter is not doing what it's being told to do, the bigger the p-term is. The d-term is proportional to the, the rate at which the error is growing or shrinking. So uh, without getting into mathematics, uh, the d-term is like a, just a really hyper-excited chihuahua that we're going this way. And the faster it's moving, the more excited it is. Maybe it's better to compare it to a cat. Right, it's a, maybe that's a better analogy. The faster it's moving, the more excited it is. It doesn't care which direction it's moving. It doesn't care how big it is. As long as it's moving, the D-term gets really active. And one way that the D-term can become large is if you move the transmitter stick 
very quickly. In that moment, when you move the transmitter stick very quickly, error becomes very large because you haven't, the quadcopter takes a second to get going and you can move the stick much faster than the quadcopter can typically move. So when you move the stick very rapidly, D-term becomes very large and that's known as D-term kick. Now, in this case, because RC command is making these big jumpy stair steps, it's as if you're moving the stick very quickly all at once. You're moving the stick smoothly and slowly, but what the flight controller is seeing is, uh, and the D-term is going bonkers. Now, the D my D-term here, if we look at it, is not going bonkers because I made these traces with the props off on the bench so I could make this video for you. But if we look at, at D-term in flight, when we see these RC command stair steps, what we see is that the D-term jumps. And that is not necessary. Well, we'll get to that. It could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing. Now, let's look at a log file from... Betaflight's default setup. And by default, Betaflight has RC interpolation turned on on the pitch and the roll axis. So if we look not at RC command, well, no, let's look at RC command. If we look at RC command, here we can see that I'm moving the stick on the roll axis, and you'll see that there is absolutely no stair stepping there. RC interpolation is a, is a smoothing. It's a low pass filter, if you care to call it that. It's smoothing, if you prefer that term it applies smoothing to RC command. And as a result, the movement of RC command is more like the actual movement of the stick. It removes that stair stepping and therefore it gets rid of the D-term kick or at least minimizes or reduces it. But nothing comes for free. Anytime you're doing filtering, you also add delay, you add latency. That's It's inherent with filters that that's gonna be the case. So the goal in adjusting RC interpolation should be to minimize the amount of delay while still keeping the, the numbers smooth. And as you might expect, the default values for RC interpolation are a little bit conservative. We, the goal is to get the smoothing, even if it means we have a little more delay than we might need to have. Here we are in Betaflight. Uh, this is Betaflight 3.2, but the same stuff is present in older versions of Betaflight, at least back to 3.1. Uh, if we look in the receiver tab, we can see the RC interpolation setting, and by default, it's set to auto. And what that means is that Betaflight is going to intelligently guess, based on your receiver type and so other, other characteristics, what the right value might be. Uh, but as we said, we could tune this a little better. And the way we do that is by setting it to manual, and we can adjust the RC interpolation interval. And the gist of this is that the larger this number is, the more smoothing there is, but also the more delay. So what we want to do is we want to decrease this number and then go fly. Or in my case, what I did is I just armed the quad with the props off and then I took the stick and I just jiggled the stick. I moved it and then I looked at the, the black box logs. So you're not going to be able to tune this without black box. You, can, you have to have black box to do this. But we're just going to reduce this number until we start to see the stair steps reappear. Let me show you some examples of what that's like. So the default RC interpolation interval uh, for my setup was 22 milliseconds, and you saw that a minute ago. Here I'm gonna show you an example with RC interpolation interval set to 16 milliseconds. I've dropped it down a fair whack. And what I wanna do is I am going to look at uh, which axis was I moving? Which axis was I jiggling the stick? It looks like I'm moving the roll axis. And what I'm going to do is, again, I want to have no expo. Oh, no, not RC. Yes, RC command. What I want to do is I want to have no expo, because I don't want to I don't want to distort the lines at all. No expo and 100% zoom and no smoothing. So I just want to see exactly what the value is without uh, the Black Box Explorer doing any kind of interpretation. And when I do that, I can see that these lines are still really smooth. There's just no stair-stepping whatsoever. Even, I can see maybe just the tiniest bit of a stair-step here. Do you see how this line is kind of smooth and then there's a little bit of a notch here, right, where it's not smooth? but overall it's still very smooth. So I go back, I, I change the value. This time we're gonna try a value of 14. And again, I arm the quad, I wiggle the stick, and I capture the black box log. Let's have a look. Here we're looking at pitch. It looks like I wiggled the stick on pitch. And again, we see very smooth, no signs of stair stepping yet, pretty clean. 
So we knock it down again. Now we're at 12. At 12, it almost looks like I'm starting to see just the tiniest bit of lack of smoothness. You see right here, for example, or right here, it's just starting to get a little bit notchy again. Oh, I keep it in graph setup when I mean to hit open file. And at 10, here I can really start to see like right here, I can really start to see it, it starting to get unsmooth again. Uh, yeah, especially here. Like, look right here where I move the stick really quickly. You can definitely see the stair stepping starting to come back out again here. So here I'm really, if you just look at this playback at 100% at speed, you can see I'm really jamming the stick, right? So, so, and you can definitely see as I move the stick very quickly, the stair stepping is coming back. So for me, it feels like a value of um, maybe 12, 13, or 14 is the value that gives me almost no stair-stepping whatsoever, but with, still with plenty of smoothing, and that's great. So that, that's, that's what I'm going to set the value to, and that's going to decrease the latency just a little bit between the stick input and the motor output, with basically no downside. If we go to the command line, and I type get interp, you can see there's an option, RC interp channel, so CH, and that controls what channels RC interpolation is applied to. So by default, RC interpolation is not applied to all four of the control channels. It's only applied to the roll and the pitch channel, but you can have the option of setting it on roll pitch and yaw, or even roll pitch yaw and throttle. The answer to why you might do that lies in a discussion of set point weight, D-term kick, and set point transition, but I think that's enough for this video. We'll cover those in a future video. Leave any questions that you've got down in the comments. Hope this was educational, and as always, happy flying.